Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of the Manned Multirotor Project. Today we are going to find out the maximum practical speed of this vehicle. We are at Laxo Airport to conduct these tests. We are just passing over their control tower, heading down towards the runway. And before we carry on this grand tour, I want to say thank you so much, Klaus Josefsson at Närkes Utbildningar for hosting us at your location. And I also want to say thank you, Bosse, for flying the drone and filming. And of course, thank you, Natalie, for all the general help driving the car, filming, everything. Thank you so much. And here you can see the mighty fine runway over which we will do the testing. Natalie will drive the car uh, in uh, incremental speeds. So she will start at driving 30 kilometers an hour. And my job is simply to try and keep up with her. And when we will, then we'll stop and uh, turn around and go up 10 kilometers an hour in speed and uh, do uh, the next test. And then we will see where the multirotor maxes out. And here you can see uh, we are unpacking the multirotor. I just finished the build of the, uh, this uh, custom made box sitting on the trailer. So that I will be uh, able to go to different flight locations further on this spring. And we are just uh, taking out the last part there of the, uh, of the multirotor and assembling it. The uh, total assembly time of the vehicle is around 15 minutes from uh, being in the box until you can sit in it and fly away. And here, am I I'm here I'm finishing off with uh, hooking up the Kevlar lines with their carbonier down to the attachment point on the chair. Okay, so first up now is to just fly away and park the multirotor next to the car in the background before we start the first uh, run. I have not been flying this multirotor properly for almost a year. I did a short hovering flight uh, around New Year just to uh, lower the voltage in the batteries uh, because I tried out the new uh, charger so they were all fully charged and I need to discharge them slightly. But I'm really rusty and I can, uh, I can both feel it and see it that I'm sort of um, I'm overcompensating and I'm uh, kind of a little bit jerk on the controls and not as smooth going in the, in the headwind and then changing to the tailwind. I, I noticed that I'm sort of, uh, well, not as uh, <laughs> competent as a pilot right now uh, that I was when I left up off last season. Uh, but it's all good fun anyway. It's just that it's not as uh, uh, beautiful flying it as I remember it. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty clean runway, but it's still a lot of dust blowing up. Uh, small particles of uh, asphalt or sand. So I can feel it in my face and it's kind of uh, a little bit annoying. But when I'm flying faster forwards, I suppose I will not have that dust storm in my face. Okay, so that went pretty well. I'm really excited at this point. Uh, I'm very focused. And this is uh, the first turn, so we're going 30 kilometers an hour. And I am very interested in seeing how this will uh, turn out. And I can tell you that flying at this speed feels a lot faster when you're sitting in the uh, multirotor than if you're sitting on a moped or in a car. But also we had a slight headwind going this direction, so the airspeed was actually a little bit more than that. So this is the setup that we're going to repeat now and find out the, uh, the maximum practical speed. So now we are turning around and we are going for 40 kilometers an hour test run. And I can feel that I have a slight tailwind. It's uh, a lot easier to pick up speed. Even though it's not a windy day, it's uh, still significant when you're sitting in it. So yeah, that felt comfortable. 
and now we're going 50 kilometers an hour into a headwind it's al always uh, important to keep the track over time and when I'm doing this constant start and stop there are a lot of start and stop on the uh, on the timer as well And here I really have to uh, tilt this forward to keep up. It turns out that 50 km an hour is pretty much the cruising speed of this vehicle. I ha still have some headroom uh, on the throttle uh, and you can see on my uh, angle of attack that I, I could tilt it a little bit more and, and go a little bit faster. But I can feel in the structure that it's, uh, it's not comfortable going faster. I can feel the... Uh, the uh, vibration caused by the air going by all the tubes that the structure is made out of. And I think uh, the tubes is one very much limiting factor of the top speed. Uh, I have like 30 meters of, um, of 30 millimeters tubing and, and air, uh, the, uh, the air resistance around a circular tubing is pretty significant. Uh, the air really doesn't leave the, uh, the backside of a tube in a nice way. It's a lot of turbulence and a lot of drag. So it's like 30 meters of this tubing and I have like over 40 meters of this uh, finer 5 millimeter uh, rods uh, and the same uh, applies to them that there are a lot of air resistance uh, moving this fast uh, through the air. And the, the other reason that the top speed is kind of limited uh, are of course the propellers. These propellers are optimized for hovering and they are great at that, they're very efficient. Uh, this is a 17 by 5 inch carbon fiber propellers. So they're, they're good at uh, handling the air uh, in a hover, but if you're going fast forward, they start to become uh, more of a drag than, than a, uh, a propulsive uh, part of the system. Uh, so if I would like to go faster, I would probably have to either uh, like use streamlined aluminum shaped tubes or, or add like plastic uh, fairings on them so that you get a more um, drop shaped uh, contour of the uh, of the tubing uh, and also change the propeller for higher pitch propellers uh, but the thing is uh, I don't need to go anywhere with this vehicle I just want to hang in the air as long as possible because that's what gives me satisfaction uh, so so I'm good at this uh, at this point but if I would like to like uh, compete with this vehicle going a certain distance a certain speed I would definitely go with higher pitch propellers and streamlined uh, aluminum tubing so uh, okay let's carry on with the uh, with the rest of the film so it's a little bit sad that the top speed is kind of limited but on the other hand when you're sitting in the chair flying at 50 kilometers an hour it feels like you're going like in 80 or 90 perhaps so uh, the the experience of flight and speed is actually still present although you cannot cover as much ground as uh, you would in a faster vehicle and just for fun we're going in the other direction here so now we now we have a tailwind and it turns out that the feeling is kind of different uh, it's much less vibrations with the tailwind coming in uh, so it's uh, a much more gentle and speedy flight so we're going a little bit faster than 50 ground speed at least uh, in this uh, trip here. Yeah, it is so fun to fly this vehicle. I, I really cannot convey convey that in these videos, but it's just a joy. Even though you know it's a uh, high risk business, it's just so... <laughs> you're not thinking about that when you're flying, you're just thinking about how wonderful it feels. So this is our tower buzzing clip. We did a couple of runs, but this is uh, one of them. And I think it's so magnificently beautiful to see the airstream represented by uh, the dust cloud underneath the vehicle. I'm really like uh, like the kid I was when I was like 10 years old and just egging my fingers in the water and or perhaps down to the uh, seabed 
you can see the whirling of the uh, sand under the water and this is like the same emotion and experience when you're doing this in the air with this vehicle just watch that dust cloud isn't it beautiful how it uh, propagates just going zigzag around the uh, flag poles here saying how to how to boost it up in the uh, in the tower and these uh, slight banking turns are just the best it feels so so right it feels like a good thing <laughs> when you're when you manage to have uh, coordinated turns <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't know that it would be such huge dust cloud it's Natalie there <laughs> filming from the other direction oh I'm sorry I've always been so ambivalent to the uh, the um, the flying the action the flying action uh, part of me really wants to be down on the ground like you're flying a radio controlled model because it's so beautiful to see an object fly in the air and when you're sitting in it it's not at all the same but it's it's a wonderful feeling but it's not the the visual uh, pleasure as when you're standing on the ground so i would really like to uh, change position here with natalie and have her fly the aircraft and the uh, and I can just feel the air stream coming down from it and uh, enjoy the flight from the ground, which I really do when I'm flying radio control models. But of course, it's a huge privilege to be able to sit in the chair myself and, and do the flying, of course. And uh, my timer actually malfunctioned, so I'm just taking uh, uh, the safe way now and. Uh, I'm uh, finishing off this wonderful evening by uh, flying off to the uh, to the trailer and uh, landing it close by so that we don't have to carry the parts a long way. Yeah, what a day! It was such a nice experience and interesting as well to, to find out the, uh, the cruise speed. And I might redo some of these tests another time if I do any modifications. Uh, but for now I'm satisfied. And here we're speaking about the, uh, <laughs> the ring rustiness that uh, Bosa also felt. Uh, it was a long time since he flew his camera drone. So we're having the same problem of overcompensating and stuff like that. Yeah, it's his first time I'm flying this chair with the uh, with the uh, motorcycle protection gear, and I feel so clumsy. And Natalie just asked me here, my uh, uh, summing up the day, and I just said that it was spectacular. And that's pretty much all for now. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing, and uh, I will see you in the next episode.